with the stopwatch. Myra, you can take care of the time limits. Okay, guys, also just a quick announcement, judges and participants. As Sampreet is here, this room will be live streamed on the Ignite page. So um, just wanted to let you guys know that. Sampreet, you can begin the live stream if you want now. Great, thanks a lot. Um, Pratyush and Myra, over to you. Okay, thank you, Jason. How come there's so many people here in this? It's only supposed to be four participants, right? Yeah, sir. Uh, there are two volunteers. I'm present, and there are two judges also. So, okay. yeah. This is round two, right? Yes. Sir. So, who is team one? Uh, sir, team one is D. Rahul Prabhu and Alekha Banerjee. And team two is team H, Tapas, and Nikolish. I will send the details again on the chat box. No, no, I got it. Alekhya and team two is Tapas and Nikolish. Okay. And the topic? Malashri, you know the topic? No, I don't uh, remember. I'm just waiting for I'm just going through it, looking for it actually. But they will announce it. Yeah. Uh, actually, it would be good if you could put the names of the participants also. No, oh, Mom, I just did that in the chat box. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wait, sir, I'll tell you the topic for the uh, so judges and participants, this is round two, breakout room one, and the topic for this round is the human race should focus its efforts on colonizing a planet for the next hundred years. I repeat, the human race should focus colonizing a planet for the next hundred years. A uh, affirmative team is Rahul and Alekhya, which is team one, D. And the negative team is Tapas and Nikolish, which is team H and team two for this round. Is that clear, participants? Any questions? Okay. Uh, seeing none. Uh, Vivek sir and Mala ma'am, could we start the round if you guys are ready? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Great. Pratyush, Myra, you can begin. Yes, would request everyone to speak a bit loudly, please. Okay, um, to start off, the affirmative team will begin with the constructive speeches. So the affirmative team, you have the floor for six minutes. If you look back at humanity and our evolution, we started off conquering the land. We moved from continent to continent as we spread our um, human nature all across the world. Then came the seas, circumnavigation, finding new continents. Finally, in the last century came the skies with the Wright brothers creating the first airplane and now we all have the airplanes and aircraft and everything we see nowadays. What's next? The answer is simple, space. Space is the final frontier, the last step for humankind, the last path in our evolution and on our growing prowess in this universe. Space must be colonized. It is the only natural thing and it's the only logical thing to do next. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Prabhu and I'm from Greenwood High International School, Bangalore, India. And I strongly believe, strongly believe that yes, humans should focus their efforts on colonizing a planet before the next hundred years. Let's define the topic. What is colonization? Colonization is not simply going to a planet and living there. It involves all of the steps taken to get there. It involves creating sustainable living spaces. It involves creating the aircraft needed. It involves preparing a set of the population to go to another planet. It involves all of these smaller steps. It's not simply about going there with a tent and an oxygen can and trying to survive for as long as you can, as many of the Hollywood movies make it out to be. 
And what does focus its efforts mean? Focus its efforts means that we should be putting our attention, we should be putting all of our efforts into making sure that we can achieve this goal. That means you can't simply put it to the side and say, oh, there are more, or more, more pressing things you need to do, or oh, there's some other cool project which we'll, we'll finish in one or two years, which we, we should do. We should focus on this. This should be human, one of humanity's big goals, as you would call it. As I was saying before, this is natural in humans' evolution. We conquered the land, we conquered the seas, we conquered the skies, now we must conquer space. Without the focus and without ensuring that we do this through and through for 100 years, we'll never be able to achieve any, any other goal. As Oscar Wilde said, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Even if we miss our goal of colonizing a planet and living there and creating human colony wherever in the universe, we'll still have all of the smaller past achievements, which would be extremely significant in not only helping our space exploration, but also helping us humans live our lives today. For example, if we find some method of growing crops in um, ho very hostile environments with limited water and limited air and limited nutrients and helping these crops survive and thrive, we'll be able to unlock the potential of barren wastelands and rocky mountains all across the earth to grow crops. And like this, there are many other smaller achievements, smaller moonshots, smaller milestones we can aim for, which we can go put our full efforts for while we go, while we go, go about conquering this 100-year goal. Thank you. I'd like to hand it over to my next speaker, Alekia. Good morning, my name is Alekhya Sengupta Banerjee and I will be speaking for the motion that the human race should focus its efforts on colonizing a planet for the next hundred years. Every day passing by, resources on our planet Earth are getting depleted. Every day we hear economists talking about how um, we're overusing resources, exploiting natural resources, and the shortage of these basic resources such as oil, coal, gas, even water is increasing day by day. There will be a time where we will face an acute water crisis, where even now there's so many places where water is considered a precious resource. What do we do then? Colonizing a planet is the best solution for this, because when we colonize a planet, we will get access to additional resources that we can use. And the surplus from that can also be sent to Earth to sustain the human race. Without this, we, when we run out of these basic resources, humans will cease to exist. Um, secondly, our population is growing every day rapidly. Currently, our population is approximately 8 billion, and it's expected to grow to 9.74 billion by 2050. How do we, we don't have enough space to house so many people, we don't have enough resources to feed so many people. And in order to sustain our human race again, we need to colonize a, plan a planet. It will give us additional space for our ever-growing population. To conclude, I would like to quote Elon Musk. The future of humanity can bifurcate in two directions. Either it's going to become multi-planetary, or it's going to remain confined to one planet and eventually there is going to be an extinction event. Thank you, and I strongly believe that the human race should focus its efforts on colonizing a planet for the next 100 years. Thank you. That was great. We'll move on with the next, uh, which is gonna be the negative team's rebuttal. So just let us know when you guys are ready and we'll start the time for you. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so, you have, start. so for five minutes, you may begin. So I can start, right? Yeah. Uh, so I would like to point out how my uh, op opposition is focusing on <laughs> running away from problems. As I stated a very good point, you know, evolution. And my very worthy opponent, Rahul, had described it in detail, how we have evolved. And I do agree with him. You know, I just want to state an analogy to you where it's, you know, it's like raising your son till a particular age, and then you realize you have raised him wrong. And then after that, you want to go ahead and adopt someone else. Does this even make any sense to you? Because it's, if, imagine if your parents are doing this to you. This is exactly what my very worthy opponents are stating. It's like we, we raise up earth, and then we realize we have raised it wrong. So then we want to run away. And my opponent had stated resources are depleting, and you know population is growing. Population is growing, it can be controlled. You don't have to go to another planet to, uh, to you know, control your population and resources are depleting. The reason is me and you. The reason is not, the resources are not depleting on its own. 
we are exploited them and that's the reason they are getting depleted and i also loved how my very worthy opponents told very complicated steps in very simple ways saying we we can just go fix up water and then you know grow plants in a particular condition what they don't understand is it's it's barren land there's no water there's no food we have everything here you want to leave all of it here back right now and then go into another planet and fix everything up from start with with so many people does does this from any angle make any sense you describe so complicated steps in such easy way over to tapas yeah adding on to what niklesh said rahul and alekya mentioned that you know colonization isn't about carrying a tent uh, and an oxygen tank and going to another planet that is exactly what we are saying you just can't take a tent and an oxygen tank and go to mars and expect civilization to flourish there's a lot and lot of work that needs to be done and frankly everyone agrees even billionaire elon musk that humanity does not have the necessary technology yet if we did have the technology already all the billionaires would have just gone to mars already why are they still on earth thank you uh alekya rahul would you like to respond yeah uh you have so you mean you better do we have a stopwatch yeah it it continues as is okay my esteemed opposition has completely misunderstood this topic they have brought up the points that humanity has no tools have no technology it doesn't have the resources it doesn't have whatever it is to colonize mars right now that is simply not the topic that is not what we are here debating about we are trying to debate over whether humanity should focus its efforts in the next 100 years for the next century in developing the technology needed for us to colonize mars of course we don't have the technology to do it right now the debate is not whether we should colonize mars we should colonize other planets right now it's whether we should focus our efforts into trying to colonize the plan- um, planets and um, and space in the next 100 years so that completely so their point of we don't have the technology right now and um we um, we were talking about complex things like uh, water etc and we don't have that right now holds no standing in this argument because the argument is about developing technology to combat those um deficiencies which we have in colonization efforts right now over the next 100 years and it is obvious given the um, given how far we've gotten in the last 100 years that if we focus our efforts if we make sure that it's one of humanity's main goals at uh, as um it should be in the in the next 100 years it is very evident that um we will be able to develop technology which will if not help us colonize at least bring us closer to a better world which um, technology which we can reuse directly into our day to day lives landed or to lake if she has anything to say yeah so to add on what uh, to add on to what rahul said we never said that it's easy to move to another planet that's that's a huge misunderstanding what we said is that it's hard it is expensive it is going to take a lot of work but it's needed because otherwise we're just going to leave our human race to go extinct on earth and that's not what we should strive for we don't have the technology yet but that's what people are working on that's what we need to focus our efforts on because that is the solution to the problems we are facing right now thank you uh seeing as the bottle round is over uh we'd like the negative side to begin with their speeches uh give me a minute oh. yeah you have the floor for 6 minutes you may begin all right so we have seen that the affirmative side has completely drifted away from the topic mentioned about how we need to build the technology in order to colonize other planets firstly there's no water on mars there are no rivers flowing there how are we supposed to build rivers here on earth and then carry it on to mars and just drop it off there that completely does not make any sense all right secondly humans have made a mess of earth we should clean it up here instead of destroying a moon or another planet like mars if humans have the technology knowledge and ability to transform an uninhabitable planet moon or any other place in space as you mentioned into an appealing home for humans then we surely have the to- technology knowledge and ability to fix the problems that we created on earth 
Some assert that leaving Earth in shambles proves we are not ready to colonize space in terms of cultural, social, or moral infrastructure, regardless of technological advancements. No matter how big a starship we create or how heavy a falcon we build, unless we solve problems here on Earth, who are we to leave the planet here in shambles? A 2018 NASA study concluded, based on the levels of carbon dioxide found on Mars, the above plan is not feasible. Lead author Bruce, a PhD professor of geological sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder, stated, terraforming Mars is not possible using present day technology. Billionaire Elon Musk explained that the SpaceX Mars colonization project would need 1 million people to pay $200,000 each just to move to and colonize Mars, which doesn't include the costs incurred before humans left Earth. Now, why would you want to spend so much money to go to a planet with nothing, no resources, no ample oxygen in its atmosphere, no rivers flowing, no vegetation, and carry everything here from Earth to Mars? Instead, if everything's available on Earth itself, why not make it a better place to live? Over to Nikhilesh. Let's fix up Earth. You heard me right. Let's nurture the nature so that we can have a better future. The Earth is what we stand on. It's the one thing that we all have in common. Start small. Don't shy away. Don't be lazy. We'll make a big impact. Trust me, we'll make a big impact. It's a collective effort. For starters, moving to another planet, it's really cold out there and I don't really like cold temperature. On a personal note, since there's no air out there, how are we going to start a fire? Did you even think of that? We need food, so we haven't yet deployed a way to grow plants and somehow even make water to go to that planet and infuse it to the ground. Don't we get tanned when on sunscreen, in spite of our natural sunscreen, Mr. Ozone? Question mark. Imagine being sun cooked in hotter planets without an atmosphere to protect us. Mercury is too hot. Venus is too. Uh, uh, Venus is far too hot. Has crushing atmospheric pressure and drains sulfuric acid. I don't want to dance in sulfuric acid. Mars is a better prospect. Temperatures that reach zero degrees Celsius in some midsummer. A thin atmosphere. Spacesuit is needed. I don't want to be walking around in spacesuit. Please. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune are gas giants, but some of their moons might not be able to habit with heated space suits. Pluto is 200 below, so let's not even talk about that. I love how my opponents are very confident about finding technology which does not exist yet, and they're not really confident about you know implementing the technology which is already there, by the way, to save the planet Earth. We have some steps to protect the planet Earth. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I know you have heard it a hundred times, but trust me, when you actually start doing it, it makes a difference. Volunteer, volunteer for cleaning up in your community. Educate people on saving Earth. Conserve water. Choose sustainable resources to live on. Shop wisely. Use long-lasting light bulbs. Plant a tree. Don't set chemical into our waterways. And bike more. Drive less. These small steps will make a huge impact, which my very worthy opponents are not realizing. Instead, they want to build technology which does not exist. And I repeat, which does not exist to colonize another planet within the next hundred years. I, I love how they're not confident about saving the planet Earth. Instead, going to another planet to establish a habitat there and live there. Thank you. This will be it. OK. So now we can move on to the affirmative team's rebuttal. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, Pratish, you can start the timer. Uh, affirmative team, you have the floor for five minutes. You may ask. I would like to thank our esteemed opposition for explaining our argument in such beautiful, elegant terms. Yes. If we can colonize the burning hot of Venus, if we can survive on Mars, if we can survive without an atmosphere, if we can survive food without water, if we can survive in all of these hostile conditions, if you can build a utopia, as the op opponent has described it, if you can build a place which we would love to live out of something as barren as Mars, out of something as barren as Neptune, as something as freezing cold as Saturn, we can do it on Earth. That is the beauty of this. If we humans have, get, uh, through 100 years of research, gained the ability to transform such desolate and destructive areas where we wouldn't be able to survive for a few seconds, let alone colonize, we will be able to do the same thing on Earth. My opponent had talked about how it was too cold in space. Well, if we find technology, if we develop technology over the next 100 years to figure out how to survive in space, how to stay warm in space, 
Who says we can't use it on Earth and implement it on our Earth? Who says we can't use it to um, uh, remove air, air conditioners which are polluting the environment? Who says we cannot use it to replace um, other forms of environmentally destructive um, actions? Again, my opponent has completely misunderstood the topic. They brought up Lee Arthur Bruce, the P, um, uh, who has a PhD, saying that it is not possible using present, present day tech. That is 100% correct. We simply do not have the capability of going and colonizing any planet right now. And that is the topic. Should we be focusing on the next 100 years? Should we focus our efforts on research and development to go and colonize uh, the, the planet? This topic is not about what Elon Musk thinks with today's technology, with today's Falcon landers. This topic is not about what has happened in the past or what is happening in the present. It's about whether we should focus all of our efforts in colonizing, in going to other planets and living there and making it habitable in the next 100 years. And therefore, all of their arguments about um, present day technology and everything else is completely obsolete. I'd like to hand it over to Alekia. Um, our opposition mentioned that there are no resources, there is no water on Mars. But I would like to inform them that water is currently found on Mars on the surface as a layer of ice. And yes, as Rahul said, we do not have the technology currently, and that is what the topic is. Whether or not we should focus on ef our effort on finding this technology. And the opposition also mentioned the uh, phrase reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. How long have we used, have, have we people been using the same cliched statement? For years now, for centuries, and has it worked? No, as I mentioned, the shortage that the shortage on our planet is increasing every day. It, the only solution to this as a result is focusing our efforts on colonizing another planet. Thank you. Uh, negative side, do you have any uh, answers yeah. to that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have the floor. So firstly, um, your idea is completely flawed. Like I said, let's reiterate back to the example given by my teammate, Nikhilesh. If you're raising a child and on one fine sunny day, the child happens to have a serious disease, would you as a parent want to fix the disease, want to cure the child or just leave him at the adoption center and just walk away fine and adopt another child? That idea is completely flawed. We are the ones responsible for destroying our planet, for creating global warming, for creating those industries that re uh, release these harmful pollutants into the atmosphere. And we need to stay here on Earth and we need to fix those problems before just leaving it all behind and just, you know, develop some random technology and go to Mars, find a solution there and, you know, start a civilization there. So we need to focus here on Earth because that is of utmost importance. Over to Nikhilesh, if he has anything to add. Uh, yeah, I do have something to add. As um, Mr. Rahul had stated, you know, we do not have the capability. And yes, he does agree and he feels that we should do it. Let me reiterate the topic once again to you. The human race should focus its effort in colonizing a planet for the next 100 years. And we stand against it which says no, we should not. That's why we stated so many ways why it's not possible. We don't have the capability. Why do talk about it? But we do have the capability. Yes, my very worthy opponents, you and me, both of us have the capability to save this planet. And let's talk about that, right? Let's save this planet together. And my another opponent had stated we have been doing reduce, reuse, recycle for so long. Has it done anything to us? I'm sorry, we haven't been doing that. And that's the problem. Thank you. Uh, seeing as both have elapsed their times and the debate has come to an end, uh, I'll stop screen sharing so so Tesu can screen share. Thank you guys. This brings us to the end of our second round. Thank you, judges. We have a short video from our sponsors that I would like to share with all of you. And after that, uh, both our judges will have the floor for feedback and to let us know who the winners are for this run. Kindly do keep your cameras on and remain in this meeting. Thank you.
Pesu, we cannot hear anything. Speed is the new currency of business. In the new digital economy, effective competition requires a balanced approach to deep digital transformation that drives direct business value. By combining frictionless technology delivery with deep industry expertise, Virtusa helps business move forward faster. We help our clients advance to their optimal business state and achieve quick and continuous return on their investments. And we accomplish this through our digital transformation studio approach. Our approach leverages a unique combination of tools, assets, and people to drive over 30% efficiency and speed in delivering digital transformation. As a global leader in digital engineering and transformational IT services, we empower our client relationships with speed at scale, our deep engineering history, business and industry focus, digital transformation studio, and talent development pipeline. Pertusa is an end-to-end -end provider delivering the full spectrum of technology services for our clients. We offer consulting and design services, digital engineering services, cloud services, and managed services. Through our industry focus, we optimize the value created at the intersection of business and technology. As a leading service provider, we have created extensive relationships with prominent technology organizations and have been recognized for our exceptional quality and digital engineering capabilities by many renowned industry analysts and awards organizations. a video from our sponsors or we're thankful for to make this event possible and successful and finally this brings us to the end of our second round thank you guys so much for participating um malashi ma'am and vivek sir over to you just give us some time just give us uh, five minutes time sure sure Guys, while our judges come to a conclusive decision, uh, just a quick announcement. If you do qualify for the final round, you will be participating. Same rules apply. However, if you don't qualify, you are free to join us and watch the final round, view it. But please just maintain decorum. And this round will take place at 1225 in room three. And keep your mics muted and cameras off if you are not participating in the round. And please feel free to join us to watch the final round because we would love an audience for it. Guys, also heads up, if you do get selected for the final round, please use this time to prepare for the topic so you can make the best out of your time right now.
Okay, right. We have come to a conclusion regarding the scores. Uh, it was a very tight debate, yes, and uh, both teams made very valid points and most of it was very well spoken and presented. So congratulations there. You all are doing well there as both of you, all of you are speaking very well and are on the topic and you have are showing a very analytical mind behind uh, whatever you are saying. Uh, however, we still have to come to one decision regarding what the uh, you know who the winner is. Trust me, the margin is very small, right? The margin is only a difference of two points, right? Uh, that's how close it is. Uh, but we have a winner, which is team one, that is Alekia and Rahul, right? For this round, uh, congratulations, Miss Malashri. If you would like to add something. No, I, I, as I, as Mr. Vivek said, I was very impressed with the quality of the debate. All of you spoke well and w w with a lot of accuracy and precision. Um, looking at the words of the debate topic is very important because that kind of turns the balance sometimes. All right, how well you have read the words and how well you've analyzed the words. All right, so that kind of you can playing around with the words often helps, which it did, I think. All right. So that's what I have to say, but I was really impressed by all the speakers. But Nikhilesh, very good use of humor, I must say. Absolutely, yes. Right? I, I, and it, it was very intelligent use of humor. And uh, that those always who have been in my class, it's not like the kind of humor I do, which is very stupid. Yours was very intelligent, so good for that. In yeah. fact, I switched on my camera so that you could see that I was really enjoying it. Don't you wish that my humor was like in Nikhilesh's? Yes, please. I, I, I do wish. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right. So, congratulations to all of you again. Right, Tesu, take it forward. Oh, judges, I'm so sorry. I was in the other breakout room. Could I have the winners again if that's not a problem? Team it one, is, the difference is only two marks. It is uh, team one. That is Rahul and Alekya. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, participants, for joining us today. We hope you had a nice round. Sorry, sir. Next round. Oh, uh, sir. Next round is at twelve twenty-five. In Am I judging? Three. Yeah. All the judges are welcome to judge. So, if you. What do you mean, welcome to judge? Can I not? <laughs> um, no, no. You, 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 tell us if judges. we are required. Accordingly, if and when we are required, we'll come. That's not a problem. Okay, yes. sir, ma'am, ma could you guys come? Because I think for the final round, it would be helpful if we have a conclusive decision from all the judges to be there. So, Miss Harleen and Sahili will be there as well. Right, right. Okay. 12.45, right? 12.25, ma'am. 12.25, okay. Fine, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you so breakout much. Breakout room? Which breakout room? Three, sir. Three, okay. I'll send you details in two minutes. Yeah, after sure. uh, Alekha, you have a question? Yeah, I just have a question for the third topic. Okay. Um, there is, is the third topic whether we should um, militarize space and transfer, 